go and students. This is Mr. Holsey. We're jumping into Unit 5 with a lesson called Shapes and Areas. Here's Unit 5. It's called Geometry of Design. You can see in the Apple logo, they used the golden ratio a lot for their design. This is really, really beautiful. So we're going to hopefully use lots of geometry to create good designs, not just aesthetically, but also in engineering. When you come in, here's what you need to do. Take your new seats. We're getting learning group seats that are different from our automata groups. Open the activity on Schoology and create a new entry in your notebook called this. Okay, uh, here's some STEM news that I've been putting in my presentations. We can now digitally recreate your face using a DNA sample. This story came out in, in December. So pretty awesome, but a little bit scary. Uh, some announcements. We will be having a vocab quiz coming up two days after this lesson. So after the day that you guys actually finish your um, activity. We'll have two days after that, we'll have the vocab quiz. So I will be presenting the vocabulary. It's actually on Schoology right now if you want to start studying it. You want to be really proactive, but that'll be the quiz will be a couple days from now. Today's agenda, vocab, the short lecture for the traditional learning. So if you're watching this video, you don't need to be paying attention to the, to the lecture here, uh, but you will do this activity and there are bonus problems if you have time. So the first thing is formulas for area. That's what this whole lesson is about. Shapes, you guys know what shapes are. Two-dimensional contours that, that uh, cover a surface that are closed. Area, everything inside that enclosed surface. A circle is every point equidistant from the center. Circles are used in engineering a lot. They're very strong, used in buttons, etc. Drilled holes can also be circles, uh, but they're simple and very strong. So we really like them in engineering. The area of a circle uh, is um, going to be talked about in a second, but pi right here, I've always wondered what pi is. It's just a ratio between circumference and diameter. It's a ratio. Somebody measured the circumferences of a bunch of, um, of a bunch of circles and diameters of a bunch of circles and found out that, hey, uh, it's, a, it's perfectly linear and the ratio, the slope there is exactly equal to pi. Um, the area of a circle here is, I would write this down in your notebook, A equals pi r squared. Hopefully you already knew that, but just write it in your notebook anyway. Write it in your notebook anyway. If you've ever been curious about why that's true, here's a, here's a neat little proof. You cut the circle up into all these little pie or pizza slices, and then you stack them all up. Uh, the height is r, that makes sense. And then the width here is pi r, which is the circumference 2 pi r divided by 2 pi r. And then that makes a big rectangle or parallelogram which the, the area of which is pi r squared. Cute little form uh, proof there. Okay, an ellipse, we're gonna spend considerable more, considerably more amount of time on this. An ellipse is generated by a point moving in a plane, a point going all the way around the ellipse, the ellipse, so that the sum of its distances from two other points, two other points are the foci or focus is, is constant. So. Uh, anywhere around the circumference of this ellipse, the distance from this point to each focus, uh, those two distances, four and two here, <clears throat> are always, the sum of those two distances is always going to be constant. So in this ellipse, it's always going to be six. Even if it's right here, that'll be three and three. If it's over here, that'll be two and four instead of four and two. Uh, if it's over here, That'll be just a tiny bit plus a lot, a lot more. So maybe 0.1 plus 5.9, that's still six. It's always gonna be equal to this major axis. Now, what is the major axis exactly? It's up here. From the endpoint to the endpoint, long ways. Long ways is the major axis all the way endpoint to endpoint. Minor axis is all the way endpoint to endpoint, short ways through the center. Both of those go through the center. So that's 2B and 2A. You should also note that little a right here is from the center to the endpoint. That's called the semi-major axis. Same thing with b. Semi, semi means half. Semi means half, so that's half of the minor axis right here, b, from the center to this short endpoint. Half of the ma minor axis is the semi-minor axis. Half of the major axis is the semi-major axis. You can remember, a is the longer one, b is the shorter one. a comes first in the alphabet, b comes second. So. Using those A and B measurements, <clears throat> which is again the semi major and the semi minor axis, you have the area right here. Write this down in your notebook. A is pi times A times B. Pi, pi times A times B. Okay, here's a quick fact check. What is A in this ellipse? A in this ellipse is from the center <clears throat> to the endpoint, the long endpoint. So this is the major axis. A is the semi major axis from the center. See this endpoint? It's five. 
Easy, five. What is B? B is the semi-minor axis from the center to this little endpoint here, two. Or you can go this way, the distance there is two. Two for B. <clears throat> Great, so using those two answers, five and two, what is A? Use your formula before. Easy, plug it into the formula. Pi times A times B, pi, 3.14 times five times two, 31.4. Okay, polygons are shapes that have straight lines. Easy. So you can think about it this way. We're talking about subsets. A set is big, a subset is small. Um, all shape, you know, all polygons are shapes, but not all shapes are polygons. You could have round shapes. Circle is not a polygon. So all po polygons are a subset of shapes. Remember that polygons are a subset of shapes. <clears throat> angles, you know what an angle is. Here are the types. Triangles, three sides. 180 degrees for interior angles. Here's proof of that if you're in geometry using the alter, alt, alternate interior angles formula from geometry. This is really cool. This this stuff was uh, was discovered by Euclid way back in ancient Greece. And I love how geometry uses a very uh, specific set of axioms to build on itself um, with lots and lots of proofs. It's a very succinct and contained system of mathematics. It's beautiful to me. Here are the three types of <clears throat> triangles that you can encounter, right? Acute, deuce. I think you know those. Triangles are very strong in engineering, and here's why. A, a square or a uh, rectangle can keep its side lengths the same, can keep its side lengths the same and still change angle. That means when there's a force applied, when there's a force applied to a square or a rectangular, rectangular uh, structure, it can bend those side lengths won't change. Those those beams will not change length, but the angles will change, which is the weak point. Those those joints, the weak point. Now in a triangle, those joints, the weak points, they won't change because the angle resists change. Mathematically, a triangle cannot change angles while make, make, while keeping its lengths the same. So you see triangles all over the place, and trusses especially like this. These are all lots of different triangles stacked, but this structure is going to be really, really strong. Okay, um, another thing you can do with triangles is inscribe them. I remember these words. Inscribe it means putting your polygon or triangle inside a circle. Circumscribe means drawing it outside of a circle, around the circumference of a circle. In other words, your triangle in the in, an inscribed triangle touches the circle at all its corners circumscribed triangle touches a circle on all its sides. Uh, area of a triangle is this right here, half times <coughs> B times H. <coughs> Thank you. I think you remember that, but just write it down in your notebook just for reference. Quadrilaterals are a subset of polygons. So we're getting more specific. Quadrilaterals are a subset of polygons. All polygons that are four-sided. Easy here. All polygons that are four-sided. Parallelograms are a subset of quadrilaterals, all quadrilaterals that have opposite sides parallel for both sides, rhombus, rhomboid, rectangle, square, etc. Parallelograms, if both sides of a quadrilateral are parallel to each other, um, the have, have an area formula of this, base times height, which is th exactly the same as a square rectangle. So pretty easy there, base times height. Now, we're talking about multi-sided regular polygons. <clears throat> a regular polygon is a polygon with all sides equal and all interior angles equal, no matter how many, how many uh, sides it has or angles it has. A cool thing about multi-sided regular polygons is that it can be inscribed in a circle. In other words, all of its corners will touch a circle if, it go, if the circle goes all the way around it, if it's inscribed, if it's an inscribed polygon. Also... All of the sides will touch a circle if it's circumscribing, or if it's a circumscribed polygon. Okay, all the sides will touch a circle, and all of the corners will touch a circle. Different circles, obviously, but that's how you know that it's a regular polygon. Okay, um, you guys know the examples of regular polygons, but here's the formula. This one I'm sure you haven't seen yet. A equals N. N is the number of sides. So if we're talking about a, a hexagon, it's six. S is the side length, the measurement of the side length, if that's 5 inches, 5 feet, or whatever. 4 times tangent of 180 divided by N. N is the same. Now, tangent, um, I, I hope you've seen a tangent before. That's a, that's a trigonometric uh, function there, trigonometric function. And 
uh, it, it takes in an angle as its argument. So everything inside here is an angle, but it's going to give you a different answer if your calculator is in ra radian mode or degree mode. So for this formula, make sure you have your calculator set to degrees. Uh, radians or degrees, that's what I meant to say a second ago. Make sure you've got it set to degrees, 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 degrees for this uh, calculation. Now, here's a quick knowledge check. If the S or the side length is 2.0 inches, what is the area of the hexagon in units of square inches? Show your work in your notebook. Okay, here's my work. I put the uh, formula over here again in S squared over 410, 180 divided by N. N is 6 in this hexagon. S is 2.0. Again, down here, N is 6. I simplified a little bit, 24 square inches, tangent of 60 times 4. And then all of that uh, simplifies down to 13.8 inches squared. And then I rounded it to two decimal or to two digits here, to two digits, 14 inches. And why did I round to two digits here? Well, that's the next thing I wanted to talk to you about, is precision, revisited. Let's revisit precision again. So engineers need to communicate precisely to others for various reasons, so I'm not going to go through them. But remember, whenever you measure a value, remember whenever you measure a value, if it's on a digital instrument, what do you do? You record all the digits. Yes, so I hope you remember that. If not, write it down again. All You record all the digits. Uh, if it's a decimal scaled instrument, you record all the digits and then you estimate that one digit. And I prefer that you put that estimated digit in parentheses. So this guy right here, you can just put that right in parentheses, 6.3, parentheses 3. That tells me that that's a uncertain digit, the 6.33. Okay. Um, Okay, that was for measured values, measured. Now we're talking about calculated values. So whenever you calculate something, the rules for precision are a little bit different. I got four rules for you. I'd write these down and we're going to go over each of them in turn. First one, specified precision. If I tell you, uh, calculate the volume here and, and record it to the nearest uh, hun uh, hundredth of a cubic inch here. Hundredth of a cubic inch. Um, then, I can, and then I might say precision is 0 0.00, and you would just record to the nearest hundredth of an inch. Easy. Number two, common sense. If you calculate that you need 4.4 gallons of paint, by five. That makes sense. If you calculate you need 4.01, and maybe make it stretch, you know, use your common sense. Engineers are much better than mathematicians about using their common sense. Accepted conventions. Round money to the nearest cent, round lumber to the nearest inch. Easy. Another accepted convention is in statistics, round both mean and standard deviation to one digit uh, past one more decimal place than the original data. One more decimal place than the original data for mean and standard deviation. Then uh, the, fourth, the fourth rule, least precisely measured value. If you're doing a calculation with measured values, which is all the time in engineering and physics and other sciences, you need to consider the least precisely measured value because if you round to more decimal places than that least precisely measured value, uh, then you're going to insert some false precision. You're going to say, hey, uh, here's my final answer, you know, 28 point la, 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 centimeter squared, when all I know about this, this circle is that it's somewhere around 3 centimeters. That means, you know, it's probably more than 2.5 and less than 3. Um, it's somewhere around... It's somewhere around three centimeters, but, but I don't know exactly that the that the area is going to be twenty eight point blah blah blah. blah. That's I, I ju that just comes out in my calculator because pi has so many digits. Pi has so many digits. So if I calculate this, and I know this answer is a little bit different because it's not three, but yeah, three point five. That's only two decimal. Uh, that's only two digits, one decimal place. But the calculator again spits out all these digits, all these decimal places. Not not all of them are significant. I'll, I'll tell you which ones are significant. But whenever you're doing lots of calculations, this is important. I'd write this down. Keep an intermediate value in your calculator and don't round. Don't round this until the very end. Don't round until the very end when you're doing lots of calculations. Now, here are the rules. Here are the big rules. Use the precision to the least... Uh, let's see. Let's see. For adding and subtracting... Um, 
use the precision. So that is the the decimal places. Yeah, I would probably call that, uh, or, or, or at least clarify here, decimal places. That's when adding and subtracting. When adding and subtracting, round to that nearest decimal place, that is the nearest decimal place here. <clears throat> and that's the least precise value, the least precise value. So you look at your two measured um, values here. I've got 3.2 and I've got 4.67. How many decimal places does this one have? It's two. How many decimal places does this one have? It's only one, dec one decimal place past the decimal. So we round to that tenth place there. We round to the tenth place because we're adding for perimeter. No, but now when multiplying and dividing, you round to the number of digits. And again, use the least precise, least precise value. But consider number of digits instead of decimal places when multiplying and dividing. Uh, so I've got two numbers here, th 13 and 4.76. How many digits does this one have? It's three. How many digits does this one have? Two. So we consider the one with the least number of digits, two digits. When we calculate and find our, our answer, we have four digits here. We round to the nearest two digits because our, our least precise value here has two digits. We're multiplying and dividing. Okay, if you are doing this calculation, three times six, um, because the area here, we're trying to find the area of this parallelogram, B times H, three times six is 18. That makes sense. Could you round it, or could you specify 18.00? I wouldn't, because we don't know that it's exactly 18.00. Um, I would round to 20 feet. <clears throat> I would round to 20 feet. Now, that seems really weird because, Mr. Holsey, it's so easy to look at this and say 3 times 6 is 18, not 20. You're wrong. You're dumb. You're doing it wrong. Um, in a way, yes. I mean, if you think about common sense like we talked about earlier, if I bring this drawing into a, you know, a carpet manufacturer and, and I say, hey, I've got a 3 by 6 uh, foot space. I want 20 feet. <laughs> of 20 feet of carpet, they're going to say, no, you want 18 feet of carpet. But when doing this calculation, perhaps in more complicated um, calculations here, um, uh, yeah, in more complicated calculations where we just have one digit, we would round to the 20 feet. And I'll show you why. Because if we only round to one, if we only have, if we only had measured values to one Des, uh, to one digit here, then we don't know if it's 2.4 or you know 5.4 here. And if we did have 2.4, um, let's see, three. If this was 3.4 and this was 6.4, that actually <coughs> rounds to um, what was that? That, that if it's 3.4 and 6.4, that would actually be 22 feet. 3.4 times 6.4. Um, but if we had instead 2.6 and 5.6, which would round to the 3 and the 6, that would be more like 15 feet. So both of those could round to 20, and we would still be accurate here. We would still be accurate here. Um, but uh, as long as we only know 3 and 6, as long as it's not more precise, then we can't say, we can't say 18. If we went to the carpet manufacturer and said, I have a 3.0, or 3.00 foot by th by 6.00 foot space, then yeah, the 18.00 um, would be would be better there. <clears throat> but let's keep moving forward. Um, if we have this instead, 3.8, 3.48, and 6.21, we have all these potential answers here: 21.6108, 21.6, 22, rounded up to two decimal places, or 20, rounded up to one digit. Which answer is most appropriate, you tell me. To answer this question, you need to look at how many digits we have because we're multiplying. How many digits do we have? We have three digits, so we need to round to three digits. Um, just remember, whenever you calculate, it's just an estimate because we've done our measurements, and measurements are all estimates too. So the calculation should be an estimate as well. And remember, these are the four things, and don't forget your units when you do calculations. That's it, guys. Have a great day.